Um, let's talk about other awful things. Let's talk about the most talented people in Los Angeles. Let's talk uh, about the people sitting at the top of the heap at the entertainment industry. The only people doing well in Hollywood right now. Mm-hmm. I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. <laughs> <laughs> and you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Elephants. Bump it! Bump it! Um, this was a kind of good episode. It was mellow, but in an interesting way. Served a little. Mm-hmm. I'm not mad at it. Bethany Frankel haunts the episode. God, what doesn't she have her claws in? Mm-hmm. We open at Kyle Chan's store. I went. Kyle Chan killing the game. We don't know if he's gay or straight. Or Still or no uh, tea on the sexuality of that's Kyle cool. Chan, but that's okay. Maybe he's ace. Yeah. Sheena is hard at work vlogging and getting ready to shoot a music video for Good as Gold. The Screamo version. And Katie texts a photo, a gorgeous photo of herself and says, I'm on death's door. I simply can't come. (laughs) She goes, I am so sick. Please (laughs) go without me. (laughs) And then I can't get out of bed. She had that, you know, that that photo that that kid who missed class one time, (laughs) he put like AirPods in his like nose Mm -hmm. and pretended and had like a phone charger. That was Katie. She goes, look, I'm in the hospital. I'm in hospital. <laughs> Send flowers. <laughs> I'm back in Utah. She goes, well, enough about that. We've got a music video to film. I love that Aria, he's fine. The drama. Um, I love Sheena and Katie's Cold War. They've been having it for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Like, they went from besties, almost like they were a couple. At what point where they were a couple? The, right what, before Katie got married. Okay. They were, like, fully besties. They were thick as thieves. Thick as thieves. When Stassi was gone, Stassi came back. Sheena's out. I just rewatched the episode where Stassi has that freak out at her birthday party about Bo. Oh, yeah. That was weird. Was she in, like, Coke? I think she takes a... Or maybe Adderall. used to take a ton of Adderall. And Dana's like flirts with Bo and is like, my daughter is a piece of shit. That was amazing. She was right. She was like, she's down here. You're up here. I'm haunted by them. Dana and her? Uh, Just Stassi in the extended Stassi universe. Mm-hmm. The extended Stassiverse. Bo's hot. He is kind of hot. But like in an improv class, hot. But the hottest guy in your improv yeah. class. Um. But yeah, Saucy, so she was like, whatever. She's like, whatever. <laughs> Katie can be sick if she wants. She's going to miss out on good as gold. We have a music video to film. Let's go. And she goes, who knew? Ten years after do- first doing good as gold, that it would still be making an impact. I was like, I'll fucking say. Yeah. I always knew. I've always believed in Sheena's abilities as a pop star. And I never lost faith. Mm-hmm. And to hear that she's discovered music once again warms my heart with the power of a thousand coals she goes she goes i just really think music has like become my passion it's become the thing that i just love to like express myself through my creative bones are expressed she's making a track with the 27s was like opening my eyes again to music because now i realize it's an outlet i'm an artist and i'm ready to get back into it you see her in the video going the guy's going good as good it's like Ariana's a real one for filming that video for her. That was a nice thing to do. Say what you will, but she she did not have to do that. She shows the fuck up for her friends. And Lala was nice to do it too. Yeah. Katie said. Katie said no. No, I said this one out. I see this one out. <laughs> yeah, Rachel. Lala's like, all right, are we doing this? She's like. Rachel went on Bethany's podcast <laughs> and said some shit. Well, they don't, they never address Bethany's name, which I love. Ali goes, they can't speak her name, probably. She goes, Yeah, she was on some, this like, she goes, She just made an appearance on this, this podcast, some <laughs> podcast. She doesn't say, like, it's like this random thing. And James is like, Oi, what she say? What the bitch say? And Ali's like, 
she was just going on and on about everything that happened and just like saying that she and Ariana weren't that close. And then they talk about it at the music shoot. And they're like, yeah, she said you you guys were acquaintances at best and like you weren't that close. And then Ariana's like remembering when she bought her like a piece of jewelry. Really? Yeah, at the birthday party in the desert. Remember her Tom bought her, her, her sunglasses? Like, but Ariana it was like from both of them. Mm. That was from Tom. Yeah. I mean Ariana's like, we had a lot of Instagram photos together. I was like, that's not making your case for friendship. <laughs> I know. That was, I was, was like, like, that's just a thin. Like, go the, through and just see. A thin excuse. Yeah. We did a lot of grid pics. But I do think saying that is like, it doesn't really matter if you were good friends or acquaintances. You still fucked her man. No, I think, Ra- I think Raquel, Rachel, I think coming out of the like rogue haze that I was in, I see that she continues to be very manipulative and mm-hmm. a victim. And she really skirts responsibility. I mean, she does a little, she's, I know she says like, it was bad what I did, but like she's, she, this is the story she has to tell herself to be able to live with herself. True. Because then it flashes back to last year where she's like, these are my forever friends. Like, I'm so glad to have yeah. them. And it's like, whoa, like you really did like fuck with people. Yeah. And I think Tom and, and- she won't give like, like she's not going rogue enough. I mean, I've given up on her podcast, yeah, but too. like she. I was expecting to hear like the nitty gritty details, like mapping out the course of the affair and like want- how things took place and like what the day to day was like of I'm lying to everyone I know, but yeah, I just like wanted to know more. I want to know like how many times a week were they fucking, mm-hmm. you know, how many nights were they spending with each other when he said he was going somewhere, but actually going to Raquel's apartment. Like, I want to know that shit. She never went there. Neither did Tom. I think that's, pussy ass that's pussy ass shit and i'm not okay with it and like if you're gonna go there a little you better go all the way yeah the we deserve to know so like she's spinning her yarns of like i was brainwashed blah blah, blah. and she's it's like spinning many a yarn and i know it feels like we're flip-flopping which we are i don't care <laughs> because that's what we do on this podcast but that's our fucking right that's our prerogative as american but, citizens to change our minds yeah but I'm I call bullshit and hearing it in this context and yes it is slanted to be more like anti Rachel in the show but like hearing it Antira this, Antira <laughs> hearing it a year later or whatever how long it was like six months later I'm like that was a bullshit that was all bullshit yeah and, it was fucking bullshit and because also when she's that moment when she's like these are my forever friends and the they had already fucked mm hmm. She was already. She got sunglasses from her fucking lover, s- lover's domestic spouse, mm-hmm. for all intents and purposes. Yeah, that's bold. That's psychotic. That I would be barfing again. I say this every time I talk about it, but I would literally go, "Thank you so much." And like it's reads to me now with some distance from it, like a ploy to get out of jail free by saying like I was brainwashed by this like older guy. I think partially like, yeah, she was manipulated and probably relatively easy to manipulate. But (sighs) at the same time, like she made, it's not like she was a corpse wheeled into the bank. You know what I mean? She She was a 27 year old adult. She made decisions. She knew right from wrong and she chose to, yeah, fuck people over with her actions it's yeah there's there's a lack of there's a real lack of self-awareness and it doesn't yeah you're right it doesn't matter if like they weren't that close or like you know that when they always said like your best friend you fucked your best friend's boyfriend it's like okay no they weren't best friends but they were the point ariana is was, not like, was kind to her yeah and was, was very like kind of big sister to her and, and trusted her and trusted her with in her, her house with her boyfriend boyfriend yeah and trusted everyone trusted her in their circle and defended her and like stuck stuck up for her a lot mm-hmm. and like that doesn't 
to me that denotes this is a good friend this yeah. is someone that cares about me and that this is someone that i should have respect for rachel did had had no respect for her relationship zero zero respect no boundaries no empathy no katie was right no empathy no compassion mm -hmm. trifling that's trifling that's seeing something you want and taking it and again it does not fucking matter if it's your best friend or a coworker. it's really fucked up it's fucked up you and know better you know, you better. know better than and of, that. Of course, I'm going to blame Tom more because he's just a pig. But like, oh, yeah, he's a total pig. And he's the one that stepped out. So it's really at the end of the day, his fault. But Rachel, you need to own up a little more. Yeah. Grow up. There's a reason why you did what you did and why you chose this. Yeah. Let's why unpack you made that. These choices. Yeah. Sheen is fucking lit up. She goes, bitch, you paid $1,000 in my $4,300 rent, didn't restock TP, and had sex in my bed. Ooh. Ooh. 4300 I like knowing in this episode like what they're paying for rent. Leave it to Sheena to bring it all back to her. Mm -hmm. Love that. Sex in my bed. You had sex in my bed? Didn't restock the TP. <laughs> Ariana's like, my life was ruined. I lost my, my partner in life. Her dreams destroyed. Well, she got a lot no, out of that. I know. I'm saying like, I know. Uh, and then Sheena's like, she didn't restock the teepee and she fucked in my bed. Disgusting. Bitch. Bitch. Lala asks Ariana if she can have her sperm donor party at Ariana's house of horrors. And Ariana says she can't because it's now the city dump of North Hollywood <laughs> because Anne no longer works there. Their house, truly, that's my hell. I was like, Sheena is a real one when she went over later and like decluttered. She needed that. You know, she'd been waiting to do that. Mm -hmm. She was like, that's how I would be with a like a best friend. If I saw that, I'd be like, this is a crisis. I'm on my way. Say, Mama, let's research. I know. I'm like trying to like move piles around but i was also triggered by my own house piles when it came to ariana's piles we've all been in a place of piles sometimes you just have a piles journey <laughs> that you have to like sometimes i just have to have a pile for months that just sits yeah i just have to have like a pile and then one day the fog clears and i get that pile out of there i like deal with it and every so often you just go, there's the pile. Yeah. Like, hi, that, that's a pile that's going on in a corner. The books, the books, and then like everything involved over there. I say that looks like a tastefully cluttered book shelf. It's a book area. Yeah. Part of my pile. Leaves of grass. Leaves of grass. Call me Ever dead. heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> Gypsy. Gypsy Rose Lee. Hmm. Um. Uh, Ariana, yeah. So she's like, I would do it, but my house is a bottomless pit of hell. <laughs> so landfill. that's a no go. And then it cuts back to like Lala and Sheena in the Jizz Factory, and Sheena is looking at all the frozen cum like circulating in the freezer, and she goes, "Wow." <laughs> Wow, it's like Cold Stone Creamery. Wow, cool. What if she went like this? Mm. <laughs> I want to see it. Can I touch it? She went like this. Wow, <laughs> it's just frozen vials. Yeah. Um, Tom Schwartz is hanging out on the floor, and then Tom Sandoval comes over to his house. Mm -hmm. I need to be real. What? I need to be real. Sandoval's looking good. Not only is Sandoval looking good, I want to fuck his assistant. He's so hot. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, Cra Craig. Craig. <laughs> Craig. Craig is like some like groupie, Tom Tom groupie that used to work there. And Sch now. Schwartz and Sandy's employee. He's got tats and he's like hot. He's James, sexy. Or Tom's like molding him, I think. Mm hmm. Tom knows that he's better served to have like a hot male assistant. And I came out of that kitchen with no shoes on and I was just like I know. I wanted him to walk on my face. Yeah, I was like, fuck this guy. Yeah. 
Sandoval's devastated from Rachel's big old podcast with Bethany. He goes, dude, I gave her everything, man. Never getting any closure, man. She clearly, lo- I loved her more than she ever loved me, man. She didn't give a shit about me, dude. And Schwartz is like, yeah, it's over. He's like, it's over, bitch. Yeah, he's like, from her mouth. He's like, yeah, and now hearing it from her mouth. Oh, this sucks, man. This sucks. And Do then you he think kind he was of genuinely cries. upset. It's really hard to tell with him. Did he really so, love her? I don't think he did. I think he loved the idea of her. I think he loves having affairs with people. Yeah. <laughs> he likes having a mistress. He loves being at the end of a relationship that he cannot extract himself from and fucking someone very close to in the same universe as the woman that he's in a relationship with. That's what and he's then, in love with. Yeah. And then setting up a n- new relationship to immediately get into. It's kind of lesbian coded. Yeah, and I think he's more devastated that that plan didn't work because I don't think that he wants to be single. No, and I think he he he's never been caught. He's probably been doing that since he was a kid. Yeah. Dude. What if he's never been single a day in his life? I don't think he has. You could be right. Dude. He's not been single since we have known of him in oh. 2013. He's a hopper. Raquel was just the next one on the list. Yeah. Laying the groundwork. And it was like great because she's on the show and then they could be on the show together. And she's then he young. could have like another couple. She's young. She likes him. And I think he, I think Tom thinks that he's very smart and he's the biggest dumbass. He's a clown. You know what you are? You're a clown. He's a clown. He's a clown. And I think that he's Jiggles more devastated that like, this just isn't going to work out the way he thought it would. Yeah, he's just like, he's a profound narcissist. And he coupled with that, he's dumb as a box of rocks. Mm-hmm. I would say dumber. He's just clashing. Mm-hmm. Those two things. And he's like, whoa, like I'm finally, this is the first time where it didn't, things haven't worked out for me. He's had a great, he's had a very charmed life. Like he's been, always been cute. He fell into businesses. He makes good money. Everyone liked him. He failed upwards. He's a literal idiot mm-hmm. and he's untalented and he's he just, hot. He's just hot. And he lucked out with like Ariana. She gave him some cred and some smart cred. And now he's like, fuck, man. And I think also they probably thought that Raquel would get back on, be back on the show. So I think he's also finding out that like she's not coming back to the show, then she's refusing to talk to him and she's going on podcasts being like I was never in love with him and it's like he wait, can't get his he can't get over that. He also can't like coach her. He can't have like a shared narrative. Mm-mm. And so he's lost his grip on everything. He's just someone that's never like suffered. Yeah. Like, I'm not talking about, like, I'm sure he's, like, had clearly suffered. He lived in that apartment. But, like, <laughs> I'm just talking about, like, he's he's just one of those straight guys that's just, he's been in a hot bubble his whole life. And he's mm-hmm. just always, things have always found a way with him. Whether it be getting out of relationships, like a snake, making money. Like, he's just always things. And this is the first time where, like, people are like, you're not a nice guy. You're duplicitous. You're full of shit. You're a fake-ass bitch. And you're dumb. But the good news for him is that he's hot. He's hot. And he's white. So he'll bounce back in no time. (laughs) (laughs) Truly. Like, this is a mere, like, stumble in the long-term trajectory of his life. Like, there, I feel like, will always in our society be a place for dumb fucking white guys. Unremarkable white men. Yeah. Yeah. So it could Um, be worse. And he's like, hey, man, so, like... Ariana, she she agreed to moving out. And I was thinking, man, like maybe and then Schwartz goes, Don't say it. And he goes, Maybe you could live with me. And Schwartz is like He goes, The implications of that. I was like, 
I love putting him on the spot where he like can't actually be like no. Yeah, he goes, oh, dude, no. I mean, that that's like a weird. That's like we'd look like Nimkin poops. I'm like too late. And then he goes, you pay you pay forty five hundred dollars for that. And I was like, damn, L A is so expensive. It's so expensive. He goes, it'd be six thou here, man. I'm like. I'm also like, you're running a fucking bracket if you're paying off your mortgage by having a friend come and pay your rent for mm-hmm. you, like, or pay half your mortgage for you, and then you get equity in this house. You should just have Craig live there. Yeah. You should just turn it into, like, Sandoval's flop house. Yeah, just have, like, Sandoval's, Sandoval's house for wayward boys. We're, like, tatted. <laughs> he literally could open, like, a boy's home. Yeah. It's, like, five bedrooms. He's like, it's, it's like so big. Why even get a five bedroom house? My God. It's like that movie. Um, What's the movie where Tobey Maguire and Michael Caine? The Cider House Rules. Cider House Rules. <laughs> <laughs> Sandoval like, House Rules. Good night, Princes of Valley Village. <laughs> he comes in every night. <laughs> princes. And he goes and he says good night. And they all sleep in like. He goes, may the winds beds. of fortune light your ways. He goes, all right. All right. Good night. He gets he goes, up and at him the next day. He goes, hey, guys, coffee's on. Just let you know it's 8 a.m. But sleep in if you want. But I'm going to be downstairs. I'm going to be starting my workout if you want to join me. I'm going to hit the tread. He's like, Craig, I know you wanted to do that. <laughs> Lisa comes to Tom Tom. That could be the thing that, like, changes the trajectory of his life. He should start, like. Mr. Sandoval School for Boys. You know what's, like, blowing up right now are those male, like, masculine oh, boot yeah. camps did you see that video <laughs> they're ha- men are paying like fifteen thousand dollars to have like a barefoot man make them like run against him in the dirt it's giving conversion therapy it's right? so wild yeah i was like men are in a bad place if you're paying 15k for this well, that's what louis did i know that was so scary i just love like they're like, run, run. What do they say when he, he's running? I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. I, all I just pictured was like you going through that. <laughs> I just pictured like there needs to be honestly a, a movie like Private Benjamin, but it's just like a gay man goes to like a, well, man, a man boot camp. I thought about doing right like, it. undercover. You should. Don't steal that, anyone. I'm a man. I'm a fucking man. Then you just send like a trans man there. That's gayer than me, That's though. That's so gay. Like, I I'm feel sorry. More, I, I have feel seen a man guys. get fucked in the ass on the dance floor, and that fucking camp is gayer than getting fucked in the ass yeah. in a gay club on the dance floor. I think most gay men are butcher than Running the guys. against a man and screaming that you're a man, I'm like, kiss. Yeah, it's scary. It's it's that's we're in a we're in a society. We but also, I'm s- like, this is what what pray tell are you accomplishing? I'm like, you're a man. Pull out your fucking credit card, then prove it. It's really weird. It's coded in like men's rights and like women I, being yeah. kind of sub- like reclaiming your your gendered. But true masculinity and like man power is being like a guardian and being like a thoughtful caretaker and a protector not in a scary controlling way but in like a i got this girlfriend way but sandoval (laughs) doesn't any of those things no so he i see his i see his his school for boys being more of a tender his school for boys is like how to shave your forehead and like dye your eyebrows and drinking like four loco Mm -hmm. and make like coffee on an espresso machine (laughs) And, like, shave your arms and, like, take fat burner pills. And go to Home Depot. Mm-hmm. And, like, hammer. Batteries. Buying batteries is huge. He's like, double A or triple A. Be sure to look at the label. He goes, what? We got to replace the smoke detector battery. Which one are those? He's like, they're the flat ones. What if they end up becoming, like, a militia and they, like, blow up it Waco. They go fucking yeah, Waco. They go, like, and ba- Timothy McVeigh. We need a Waco situation in L.A. I I'm think a- that would bring the community oh together. God. <laughs> I'm excited for that Timothy McVeigh doc. I know. Where is it? Well, it's coming. We need like, yeah, you a light like- Waco. Okay. It just would be culturally like 
give us some edge <laughs> in this dying city. Um, Take our minds off of the rent. Schwartz goes, no, no, man, I can't do that. It'll be un- <laughs> that is uncouth. For two men to live together, that's not good. People will think. People will think. <laughs> <laughs> and then Craig's in the background going like. Yeah. He's showing whole. T- Sandoval should honestly just He's just run like a cam a boy. A cam, cam boy for like straight guys. He, it's like it's like a, the Bellamy house. Yeah. Where all the guys were straight but were, did gay porn and they just like lived in this house. Or like Corbin, Fi- Corbin Fisher. Mm-hmm. That would be a great idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lisa descends on Tom Tom. I hate the merging of pump with Tom Tom. It's sick. Yeah. So they're just like, can you explain this? I can't. I've, I'm trying to imagine what it means that pump sign is just now on the other part of Tom Tom. It's obviously the same kitchen. I don't know. If she brought like pump. I can't stress this enough was not a good restaurant. No, the food was, was horrific. disgusting. It had a better ambiance than any of the other restaurants. Cause it was like, but it was very but you paid cheesy. dearly. You yeah. Paid for your life. And you paid, you paid with your bowels and your money. Mm hmm. To sit under like old trees, which by the way, where are the trees? Remember my first birthday I spent here? You were there? Yeah. We, that was, I felt kind of sad. It's a sad place. <laughs> I felt, I felt kind of bad for myself. Mm, I get that. <laughs> We've all been there. You guys were all like taking videos of me with the sparklers and I was like, oh my God, I'm like new in the city. These are my only friends, which I'm happy <laughs> about, but like, I don't know anyone else. It was a new in the city kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, sweet Logan is just managing the place. <gasps> God bless him. Love Logan. And sh- He's, he needs to be on all the time. He's so funny. I know. And they need gay energy. They need his gay energy. Mm-hmm. Schwartz comes in with his gay in crisis blonde hair. Logan kind of trolls him and is like, you turned me on with that hair. I kind of like it. Lisa goes, there's something about it. She goes, <laughs> she goes <laughs> they go nana <laughs> she goes they poke her they take her like a little bar stirrer yes yeah oh this hair yellow oh, oh my, disgusting she was, my dream is having br- pump brunch the dream is not lost and now we're gonna do brunch at tom tom i was like Oh, don't bring the vibe down. No. Tom Tom is doing fine. Why merge? The merger of the century. It is the corporate it's merger. The, it's the, the Royco <laughs> Matson merger. This is huge. Yeah. This is like Disney buying up Hulu, ABC. Fox. Is, yeah. Is Pump closing and merging with Tom Tom? No one has eyes on this merger like me. What if Amazon buys Tom Tom? It probably will. Yeah. Um, Schwartz tells Lisa that Sando is really upset because of the podcast. She goes, oh, he needs to. She basically is like, he needs to get his ass over it. Yeah. She's done with him. And it cuts back to her being like, I had a long conversation with Rachel. It's She's o- done with you. <laughs> it's over, dear. <laughs> it's over. It's very over. <laughs> Sando comes in and chats to Lisa. He's like, hey, man. He goes, yeah, I'm sad. I listen to that podcast, man. She goes, why are you listening to anything? Don't listen. He goes, I, w- I want to listen to it. I'm going to listen to what I want, man. And she I, goes, don't listen to it. He goes, I'm going to listen to it. And then she goes, basically, don't listen to anything <laughs> ever. Don't ever listen to one ever thing ever again. Just listen goes, to me. Oh, dude, I'm going to fucking listen. He's regressing. He is a baby. He's the youngest child. He's stamping his foot at Nana. Do you know an older brother doesn't speak to him anymore because of what he did? Because of yeah. Scandaball? Okay, that's a little that's much. A little much. Chill out, <laughs> Like, bro. who do you think you are? It's called, it's called blood loyalty. If one of my siblings went on Vanderpump Rules and engaged in Scandaball, we would, that would heal our relationship. <laughs> Your family would be healed. Our family would fully heal. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm fucking obsessed with you. Tell me everything. I have your back no matter what. He like said we've he, got this he called Sandoval and was like, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go. He called Sandoval and was like, take down every photo of me with you because I'm, I'm getting death threats. Yeah. Damn. I'd be like, come for me. Threaten I'd my like fucking that. life. 
I ride for my fucking sibling. I ride for him. I'd be like, this will heal us. I'd be like, let's go on vacay. Let's, let's do go, it. Let's go on vacay. Let's go on vacay. <laughs> Sanibel goes, Ariana took two months to get back to me about my counter offer. Now that she has, I don't even know if I want to keep the house. I was like, you fucking you idiot. Messy, messy bitch. This is why you cannot attach yourself to an idiot in this world Mm -mm. because once things go south and they will most likely then your deal you're you're on idiot time (laughs) then they will make your life a living hell hades he's such a moron he is i was like drag his ass sue the fuck out of him yeah fire sale throw him on the fucking streets yeah, he can live on the side of the road in that Sheriff architectural sale. digest ass homeless encampment. Oh my god, there's a, there's a, there's a stunningly gorgeous on the one thirty four on like the, it's like off, it's like on an elevated barrier near the freeway. Is it overlooking the L A River at some? It's part? near Highland Park, but it's like this gorgeous, man made home that this unhoused person made, and it's like. And everyone's mad at it, but it's like beautiful looking. It's honestly stunning. And they have electricity. They have electricity. They have a hammock. It literally is like overlooking the freeway and potentially the LA river. I was like, if you made it this far to make a stunning home for yourself, let him stay. You get to stay. I'm sorry. Like you get, you now you get to stay. People are like, they're siphoning off our electricity. I'm like, well, you know what? If they're smart enough to be able to like divert electricity to them, they've earned their place. They should share the diversion with others, and then we should all just steal electricity. <laughs> the house is like a literal like bung like it's a bungalow. Like it's a full sized home. No, it's like a three bedroom gorgeous yeah. house. It would Sorry, that's I'll what you have to do in the city. <laughs> they're gonna kick them out, but then like reinforce the house and flip it. No. You're gonna have like the property brothers come in and they're gonna like Zoe de Chanel. Zhe- yeah, Zoe de Chanel is gonna like pick some new hardware, they're gonna zhuzh the house and then sell it for two point five mil. On that overpass. Mm-hmm. Great view. Stunning. Safe. I'm say kudos to you, Mama. You built a house. Let them stay. It's Let nicer them than stay. it's nicer probably and more structurally sound than my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a hammock. I was in awe looking at it. I was Me too. Like, I was like, they really did that. This is like, that is the spirit of LA. Mm-hmm. It's a DIY mm-hmm. win. Um, Ariana is like half-heartedly wiping a countertop. I was like, girl, you cannot fool me. She's got a sponsorship. <laughs> you are not cleaning. And then Sheena and Brock come over and Sheena's like, all right, we got to take care of this bath. Your house is scary. Your it's a really scary scaring me. me. It makes me so uncomfortable, and I have OCD. Did you hear? I do. So she we're going to clean. She goes, let's take care of this first. And it's a Christmas like Christmas bag. And she's like, this has been here for six months. Goes, How long has this been here? Since Christmas? And Ariana goes, yeah. And she goes, it's August, so got to go. And she gets to work. And I was proud of this. Ariana's kind of – I think there's like – probably a part of her that's like reluctant to give up it's like detaching from shared things yeah you know and it's hard and especially when you're moving you start to realize like how much shit that you have and you're like i want to be free like i want to pile it all and set it aflame that's what and like true freedom when i've moved i purge yeah i I send things i bring things to like goodwill or i like just purge the fuck when i move like when i moved from chicago to los angeles i was in a place of like i want to set it all on fire and no true freedom i was like in my i was in like fight club mode (laughs) (laughs) um sheena has a new song coming out that is inspired by scandal i'm like i don't like the direction creatively that she's going and i want it to be like more pop music she needs i'm like this needs to end like people this is like bottom of the barrel like you're really this is a reach when is enough enough you've you've pillaged this for all it's worth all of these people have made money from this 
Sheena and Katie are doing Mango. No. Sheena and Katie are in Chili's ads now. Oh, I saw that. It's kind of good. Katie goes, "Why are you interviewing him? He's not famous." I like that. <laughs> but I'm like, they don't need like they're done. We're done. No more like dragging Rachel. It's like, God, shut up. Yeah, it, the song need is the song out? No. Okay, you needed to release that song like two weeks after Scandal. Yeah. That now is not the time, Mama. <laughs> Again, she really like. What I love about Sheena is that I support her music, but she's really bad at being a pop star. Yeah. She's like really, really bad. Like not bad at the music part, but horrible at the rest of it. That's that's but that's part of her genius. I know. God, I love her. But she needs do something else. I don't want to hear about Rachel anymore. Yeah. James Kennedy comes to Sandoval's rehearsal space. Is it just me or is James like so hot? Yeah, but also he's like butcher now. Like he's like his because maybe I'm, he's on HGH. He's lifting. There's he, something with the upper tea. body. He's on high T, but he's less gay than he used to be. But he also has like it's my favorite mixture of like butcher and like kind of cut up. But then with a gay, he was a gay ass bitch when he like walked away from Sandoval with his poodle on a leash. He also... Uh, that's what really revved my engine. Yeah, he's hot. I mean, a, a gay, like, specifically a hot gay man just being like, whatever, and then walking away with a poodle, I was like... <laughs> he also... Uh, he also... Uh, um, I was watching... <laughs> I was re-watching when he told... That, when he said that unfortunate thing to Katie at Pride. What? When he body shamed her. He goes, don't get me started on you, love. <laughs> And then he flicked. When he a talked cigarette. about her shorts that she he wears, he said she was fat. And yeah. Then he flicked a cigarette. And he went like this. He literally goes and turns. I'm like, you faggot! Holy shit! He has extreme faggot energy at times, and it is sexy. But then I like watch him with his mom, and I'm like, of course you're like this mm-hmm. with a mom like her. She has faggot energy too. <laughs> <laughs> She's a bitch. I love her. Um, She's iconic. Tom's- she is iconic and she's a sober queen Mm -hmm. love her for that tom's song original song reminds me of like a joe jonas song it has that same like anthemic like high-pitched man singing falsetto yeah he's the worst he is bad truly a cursed singer i was it was it's really bad he is no like he is he's he's got the energy sing just sing better please take a voice lesson james is kind of like Oh, because Sando has asked James to open for him at the El Rey. And James is like considering it. He was like, the El Rey is a huge venue. And so he goes to the rehearsal space to like see what's what. But really, he goes there to tell Sando a thing or two. They get in a little bitch fight. Yeah, it felt like brother. It was good. Sandoval was like, I'm just really bummed about the podcast. And like she said... Like they start just kind of it like I like the way it like slowly simmered and then never reached a huge apex of like screaming or anything. It was just like barbs back and forth. But that's that's why I'm saying something has changed with James. He's not a rageaholic. He's probably on like he's stoned. Maybe he's on medication. Sandoval goes, yeah, Rachel said that. When she told you the ultimatum to stop drinking, she did that with that in mind to like, because she knew you wouldn't be able to do it. And James goes, well, she also said she never loved you. So I don't know what, wouldn't put too much stock into that, mate. And then he's like, well, I don't know, like blah, blah, blah. And then they just go back and forth. And then James goes, I'm done with the talking shit. I'm done. You were never in love. It was just a fuck fest for six months. (laughs) Where's the lie? Where's the lie? He, goes, he spilled. No, Mama. no. We we didn't even have sex that uh, we'd have sex for like five minutes. We'd just hang out for like six hours and talk. And James was like, is like, no, mate, you were fucking all the time. That's all you were. He's basically like you were in a cum, cum you're haze. You're in a cum haze. Yeah. 
James gags him. Yeah, and then he goes, "All right, mate, see you later." And then James, and then Sandoval, I'm not opening for you, Del Rey. None of this means anything to me. And it <laughs> cuts to Sandoval's ba- like sad band. And then Sandoval goes, "Fine, man, have fun pressing your buttons." And then James goes, "What's that, mate?" And he comes back, and I went, "Whoa!" Mm, I said, "Get back over there." And he, and he went, "What's that, mate?" He's like, "You saying that? All right, mate. All right, see you later, mate." And kind of turns around with the poodle on a leash, and I was like. Oh, and I went, there's my girl. She's, she's back. She's back. So they had like a, but it was like, it wasn't like a real fight. It was like, it was very like family. Yeah. I like that it didn't get violent. No screams. It was just a good verbal sparring of sorts. That yeah. was t- every- and they both got good digs in. Mm-hmm. Sandoval with go press your buttons. <laughs> Have fun pressing your buttons on your computer. Buttons Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Kennedy DJed at Coachella. He DJ finally. For T-Swift. He DJed the Neon Carnival, which, which is, is arguably kind of cooler than DJing Coachella. But I- I, he's one step closer. I'm telling you, like he will be at in the Sahara tent one of these days. But Taylor Swift watched him. Mm-hmm. He was playing her song Cruel Summer and did like a remix and a fan was filming her as the remix started. She had no idea who he was. No, I don't think she fucks with BPR. No, I don't think she knows what it is. She did like does not know about Scandal, right? No. I don't think she knows about like things that are happening. I'm so curious to know what she knows. Does she, does she dream at night? I don't know. She just literally dreams of dollar signs. She dreams of dollar signs <laughs> and, and of like past loves. Mm-hmm. And people and enemies. And and her and enemies and frenemies. Mm-hmm. And Schemes. contracts. Yeah. She dreams about signing paperwork. Mm-hmm. And co- c- talking to her lawyer on the phone. Yeah. And sending like copyright cease and desist. Mm-hmm. Um Meanwhile, at Lisa's house, Lala's sperm donor party is underway. And it is a sperm donor party. It's not a basting party, so which she, I was sad about, kind of. She's like, I'm assembling all my bitches and my gays to help me pick out a a man mm-hmm. to sire my child. Yeah. Um, and they have three options. It's all anonymous, but they get the descriptions of the person. One of them's 6'2 and like college educated. I don't know. I was kind of weirded out by this because I just am like, you can't trust anything these sperm banks are telling you. Mm-mm. I mean, she has sperm bank man there with to like. I literally thought he was a chef. He's serving up something. He's <laughs> serving up platters of cum. <laughs> there, there was one shot of the buffet where he was like getting something. I was like, oh, the chef is there. I was like, he's going to be cutting prime rib in the corner. And then later he like sidles up next to Lala and I was like, oh, that was the jizz guy. I don't know. And like, I think this is all like, I'm, I think this is all great, but I'm like, I watched that one movie about that sperm donor guy who like was fathered sp- like tons of children. Yeah, and I'm like, what if he put it in like the gelatin? Oh, but also there's like sperm donor problems where like many people get inseminated with the same sperm and they don't tell you that like you, there's people out there with like 30 half siblings which is dangerous because what if you fuck one of them? Yeah. But also, I just want to know. I'd be like, I got my sisters and brothers. I know. I would want it to be someone I know, I think. I just wouldn't feel comfortable with like a total stranger out of a book. But uh, go one on. guy is business or art history major. I don't know. I was like, show their faces because that's the only way we can truly vote on anything. Oh, no. The first guy is 6'2 and lean. The other, the other guy's an art history guy, and the other guy's like a finance person. And they all vote for the 6-2 one. Yeah. Lisa goes, I like number two. He seems because he likes art. And then Ariana's like. Just, oh, he said he loves dogs, so you have to do that one. I'm like, wait, this, there's a lot more to this. than." And Ariana goes, I don't like the second guy. He's like, he sounds minimal with all his answers, and I think you should really take this seriously. Mm-hmm. Allie and Katie talk on the side. And Allie goes, I wanted to check in on you because I know what happened between you and Lala and it sounded heated. 
and Katie is like, what are you talking about? And Allie goes, it just seems like you're miserable and getting upset about things easily. And Katie goes, who said that? La said that? She said that about me? She goes, I'm not. I'm good. I'm chilling. I'm chill. She's stoned. I'm chilling. She is stoned. Did you see Allie's new video? No. Allie came out with a song. Is it good? No. <laughs> but it's cute. It's called like Girls. Girls Night. Girls Girl. Love that. James directed it. Directed it? Director. Director. Fucking guy Richie over here. Um, Tom Sandoval's at home and Schwartz comes over. And that's when Sando asks him to move in. Oh, I, I did that too soon. Sorry. Be his roommate. Sorry. I love that he says, we'll get alone. Schwartz hates Sandoval. Yeah. I but think he's too much of a pussy to yeah. say that. He, I think he hates him profoundly and like with all of his fiber. Wouldn't you? Someone put your whole business in jeopardy and now you own a, the shittiest restaurant in LA <laughs> with this fucking flop. Yeah. And they're like, and also to be like, let, we'll get a loan. We'll get a loan. You want to tie yourself more financially to this person, have him move in and pay half of your mortgage. Like, fuck off. Yeah, I think Schwartz is like... He's over it. I think he's getting... I think he's making moves to leave LA. He should leave. He's you think a, so? I have I have a feeling. But he has this like 23-year-old girlfriend. They she, just went on a podcast together. She'll move anywhere with him. I'm like... Go back to he Florida, He needs a, just a 20-something. Yeah, go, go in Florida where you can like pour beer on women. Like yeah, he, that's all he wants to do. He should open just like a beer <laughs> bar in Florida that serves like canned beers and has like bras stapled to the wall <laughs> where men can get drunk and freely pour beer on women. He should honestly just open a bar that the whole thing <laughs> is like men pour beer on women. That would be the most successful bar in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> that would be everyone, every guy, every person in Florida's dream. <laughs> just to pour beer on a woman like in like northern florida yeah northern florida would be yeah he would make a killing mm -hmm. she just call it schwartz's and everyone's like going to schwartz's tonight and every night just guys get fucking ripped and get angry at a woman and pour beer on women's heads and it's known for and, the, and every time and it happens women and, are like woo and, and every like, time it happens take you hear, their bras off and staple them to the wall and every time a beer gets poured you hear er, 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 Ooh. And like there's one jukebox song that like when the jukebox song comes on, you're it's like a free for all. You just pour beer on a, the nearest woman's head. Mm -hmm. That's his dream. <laughs> so just do it. <laughs> it's a good idea. Leave, LA. You leave your shitty. What little do you apartment. have here? You have the grossest apartment ever. You pay forty three hundred a month for a vertical blinds hellhole you have joe who's like you don't care about and you take for granted and then you, you have these two dogs that are cute but like take some if you like they're not worth sticking around for just let katie have them just take off in the middle of the night he should he You're, should just disappear he should an, gone girl you have an ex that's like trying to destroy your life you have an ex that is gonna systematically fuck every single person that's close to you like she will not rest until she has had part of them in her vagina <laughs> so like you've got to leave you're he's being chased out of town by a motorcycle lesbian she goes where are you going did you leave and he goes yeah i'm halfway to alabama at this point she goes oh okay and in the, in the he's Everywhere he goes with his, I'm picturing him with like a stick with a little sack tied to it, hitchhiking his way. Yeah, he hobo train hops. He like hops. hobo train hops and hitchhikes across the yeah. country, but he's also <laughs> fleeing from like the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. uh, it, he hears like a phantom like, and every time he hears that, he's like, she's, she's coming. He has to get away from Katie. Yeah. She comes, like finds what motel he's shacking up at and kicks down his door. <laughs> And fucks, she and puts fucks her boot on his neck and she like smokes a cigarette in one puff and puts it, flicks it at him. And she goes, nice try. She goes, fucks his girlfriend in front of her. I fucked <laughs> everyone in this hotel. Just fucked them all. 
everywhere he goes he like keeps trying to he keeps dying his hair changing his name checking in paying cash only and just this motorcycle fucking broad is on his tail all the time it's like late at night and you hear the motorcycle come up and he turns off all the lights and closes the shades and he's just in his motel room and you hear outside you hear and you hear ah! you hear like the motorcycle pull up and like it's kind of soft talking like of the check-in yeah. counter to katie like and then suddenly you just hear like ah, ah, <laughs> ah, and then like she through the hotel like a neon demon where like they yeah. hear like someone get it does it, it it's consensual with katie it's not scary it's not rape and she goes room to room in the motel and you just hear like oh oh, oh, oh i'm coming oh and then you hear go into the next one and it's like an elderly couple and they're like "Ooh, i don't know george should we do it and he's like i think it it seems good and then they go george 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 George, oh i think he's had a heart attack katie goes don't worry i'll fuck the grief out of you (laughs) and she goes i don't even care about my dead husband anymore (laughs) she goes you're so much better loving than my dead husband (laughs) and george is like oh no oh no and then you're and she fucking she goes welcome back i'm in phoenix you fuck this dump fucked everyone just now and she goes i just try again she goes i wanted you to know she goes wherever you go i'll follow your fucking scent and fresh on your fucking tail and i'll fuck everyone in the 100 mile radius tom goes please bubba please let me live let me live i just want to move to florida so i can open a bar where i pour beer on women's heads she goes no can do no can do no can do hombre she goes try again she goes next stop flagstaff and then she she takes a gun out and puts it in his mouth and she <laughs> goes she goes she goes suck it <laughs> <laughs> suck the barrel and he goes oh give it head go and, and she then, makes him deep throat and then she leaves a and pistol then, and then he, after she leaves he goes in the shower and he jerks off he jerks off and cries yeah he cries and cries but he comes harder than he ever has <laughs> and this continues across america literally every <laughs> night every night at a certain time you hear <laughs> he goes, <laughs> no not again he's spending thousands of dollars in motel rooms because he just can't seem to get away from her every night it's a new motel Mm -hmm. another motel another motel another motel motel. different motel another motel even every diner that he goes to she fucks the waitresses yeah like she's already been the line cooks preemptively fucked everyone like someone goes the waitress comes up and she goes can i get you anything sugar and that he sees on her arm, her sleeves a little rolled up, and she has a heart that says <laughs> Katie. And <laughs> but she has Bubba. Ah! He goes, not you. Not you too. She goes, best sex I've had all year. And he looks over and sitting at the corner of the you see Katie smoking a thing. She goes, hey. Smoking weed. <laughs> smoking a huge fucking spliff. She puts her eyeglasses down. She goes... <laughs> and then he goes home and his mom and his brothers are waiting for him at home and they go well we have something to tell you <laughs> we're all dating katie she's fucked his brothers and his mom and she then she just revs her engine and does donuts around his house <laughs> and every time he tries to sleep he, he starts going to rem he goes <laughs> vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom, vroom. and she goes by the way taking 60 percent of your bar 60 mm-hmm. percent's going to me back in la she goes you're gonna need it for protection he goes against what she goes <laughs> she goes katie could she should start like a hell's angels of girlies yeah and i think actually that's what she does when they go across america it's like the the hell's angels katie's angels gets like stronger and stronger and there are more and more so they can cover more fuck ground and then it's just like a horde of katie's angels fucking literally everyone within actual like bubba's angels bubba's angels within a hundred mile radius of anywhere schwartz is gone one of bubba's angels has fucked someone he knows (laughs) okay we have to get back okay sorry no okay so 
Tom Sandoval goes, or Schwartz goes, where's Ariana? And Sandoval goes, she's at the jizz party, which is funny. And Lala picks a sperm donor at the jizz party. Nana plays pin the jizz on the vagina. Nana seemed very Nana in this. In this. I like when they blindfolded her. Oh. She goes, oh, where am I? Where oh, am I? Why do we? What am I doing here? Lala guides her. Then at James and Allie's house, they have like a sobering conversation about kids and marriage. And Allie's like, I've never thought about this. I've never like dreamed of it. I don't, it's not something that I've like wanted. James just starts crying. I think it's kind of manipulative to start crying when someone tells you that. He's a crybaby. He is a baby. I was like, you're not being yourself here, James. You're not being the man I thought you were. (laughs) No, and she's like TBD on both, and then then at that moment I was like, you got to get out of here. Yeah, they're. I think there's a. They're not long for this no, world, right? No, it's, this will run its course. It's cooked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Tom Tom brunch is happening. I just went like this. People are there. And then Tom sits down with Schwartz to eat their little tacos, and Sheena comes over, <laughs> and she's like, "Hey guys, so." Can well, Lala there's... and Katie talk first because oh, yeah. all the girls get together and Katie's like, what did I hear you say? That I'm, that I'm miserable? That I'm devastated? That I'm unhappy? And Lala's like, I just said that you were like unhappy. And mm-hmm. she's like, I'm not. And then they're like, can we be friends? And she's like, sure, for now. It's sure, for now. But Just Lala's like, you don't have time for me or like you don't want me in your life or whatever. And Katie's like, how dare you say I don't have time for you? I have all the time. I have all the time in the world. <laughs> she goes, step to me again. And you will know my pain. <laughs> Sheena goes, I think what I've learned about a long time being friends with Lala is that like she just like really wants someone to like text her and like check in, like see how she's doing. Like let her know that you're thinking about her, you know? Was like, <laughs> Sheena is unhinged. Sheena is truly a puppet. Yeah. And then Sandoval's like hunched over a plate of food with his big old feminine sunglasses on, looking like Liza Minnelli. <laughs> he literally looks like like Ava Gardner. I was like, what is wrong with this man? I don't know. And then Sheena um strolls over to him. She goes, oh, I'm going to gag them now. And she goes, I came up with a new song. Do you want to hear it? She's like, she goes, so how are you since the podcast came out? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? And he's like, I'm sad. Like, it's just like hard, man. Like I didn't get any closure. And she goes, well, none of us got, none of us are getting any closure. So I wrote a song about it. And she plays it for him. And there's a line about a Jetta, which Rachel drove a Jetta, which I'm like, of course she drove a Jetta. Classic. She goes from a Ferrari to a Jetta. I thought you would know better. She goes, it's a line. And, it's open for interpretation, but I'll read it to you. From a Ferrari to a Jetta, I thought you would know better. And then she looks and Sandoval is like, how dare you? He packs his purse and he's <laughs> he goes, he goes <laughs> how dare you, bitch? And he struts out. <laughs> oh! In his high heels, you just hear like, clack, 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 clack. clack. He goes, I thought we were friends, you know, I thought we made healing progress. He goes, I've had enough of people monetizing off my pain, my story, my life. You fuck you. <laughs> Have fun making money off of me. <laughs> he goes, fuck you and fuck your song and fuck all your future ventures monetizing my trauma. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> fuck you, bitch. And then he runs away. He's fuck like- you all. He goes, everyone in here, I say to you now, you don't know me. You will never know me. You'll never know what's inside my heart. I bear my chest to you all. You all forsake me every day. Fuck you. And fuck you too, bitch. And then he runs out. (laughs) And he he comes back in. Fuck you. Fuck everyone in here. (laughs) Fuck all of you. How dare you. How dare you. How dare you monetize. How dare you all monetize. Fuck you. And fuck you. And fuck you too, you little, you little cunt. He goes, "Uh." goes, oh. And he goes, forgot my sunglasses. He puts his scarf. He puts his little, like, I'm out of here. bonnet on, 60s bonnet. Yeah, he goes, Mm -hmm. I'm out of here. I'm going home where people appreciate me. Leather gloves, driving gloves on. He goes, uh. 
I'm going back to this wayward school for boys where they appreciate me. I'm going back to Craig. With the trench on. And he goes. And he goes. And he looks at and he looks at Schwartz and he and Schwartz is like mortified looking down and he goes and you you say you're my friend you couldn't be a friend if it hit you in the face fuck you bitch fuck you he gets in like a convertible yeah. and goes ah! and there's suddenly there's suddenly a green screen behind him like hitchcock style and he goes oh i'll leave this place I'll leave. That's what I'll do. I'll move away. I've had a of them monetizing my pain. And then How just at that they? moment, a fucking LAPD like SUV on a high speed chase rams his car <laughs> and kills him. I want Sandoval to have like a full blown. He needs like a public freak out. I think that that would like endear people to him. Like TMZ sees him having like Coney style freak out. Yeah, like he needs, like he needs to do, like a fuck you. I've had enough. I like that. Fuck you. I've had enough. <laughs> That's it. I'm calling it. No more monetizing on my pain. <laughs> Remember, I'm calling it. <laughs> what? The TikTok. I'm calling it. What's the? Oh, I'm, That's it. I'm calling it. Um, and then it just uh, you see the credits, and it's like kind of like Good t- God. tbd yeah he needs to have like i'm excited i want him to have his like moment in the reunion mm-hmm. to go full norma like hitchcockian norma desmond a hitchcockian protagonist you'll never see me again get a good look at this face it's the last time you'll ever see it i'm done with you monetizing my pain and he looks at andy and he goes and fuck you too <laughs> he goes see this ass and he goes watch it as i leave And they're all like he should start cross-dressing they would gag. they'd be gagged he should start cross-dressing a bit Guys. what if he showed up to the reunion in like high heels to the gods bearing his leg like he should show up in like a dress i'd love it that would be so but like a mini dress yeah like a like kind of similar to what raquel wore when she wore like the one shoulder dress with like the crazy he used to dress like a fembot mm-hmm. from austin powers <laughs> guys our Two show dates have been added. They were announced yesterday or two days ago. Now that you're listening, when you're listening to this, we're doing a late night show in Chicago and a late night show in New York and Brooklyn, 10 p.m. Both shows at Lincoln Hall and the well, Bell one's House. at 1030, one's at 10. But you guys worry about that. Not us. We'll yeah. just be performing. Just be there. Whoops, you can get tickets, on, whatever. Get tickets at sexyuniquepodcast.com. All the dates are on there we can't it's gonna wait be, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be so fun come to sup after dark and let's do our cult shout out yeah Ooh, i might have fl- made a mistake with the time whatever it's fine it's fine alex delisle <laughs> alex delisle pia from australia pia from australia Ooh, make up fresh Ooh, i'm make up done fresh. with you done with your ass dj boo boo dj, DJ fuck you <laughs> rachel in dublin rachel and fuck you dublin Fist yourself, Emily Bond. I've had enough. I've had enough of your ass. Ina Sabienta betraying me once the again. Betrayer, they say. Oh, Sarah Elizabeth. Sarah Elizabeth, you bitch. You fucking bitch. Lucy from London. Oh, Lucy. Fuck I, you. Don't even tell me about you. Brooke Johansson. Oh. Brooke Johansson. Rachel Knight. Rachel Knight. Brittany Ryan Weiss. Brittany Ryan Weiss. Three names. Three names. Too names. many. Too many names. Danielle McMillan. Danielle McMillan. Bridget Wasowski. <laughs> Lady Swanbridge gives no, no fucks. fucks. Don't give a fuck about me. Jessica Hernandez. Jessica Hernandez. Malzatov. Malzatov. Mary. Mary. Mike Earhart. Mike Earhart. All you, enemies. You bitch, Mike. You bitch. Sharon Baum. Sharon Baum. Realtor. Realtor. Timothy Shield. Timothy Shield. <sighs> Summer Moon. Honey Davies. Oh. Rogue Stanley. How dare you. Matthew Thomas. No. Uh, Owsley Robinson. Oh, no. Mariah Kay. Oh, God. Or you Kathy bitch. West. Kathy West. You, what you did to me, you'll never know what my pain was. Kit Moore. Kit Moore. Hillary. Hillary. Orlando. Orlando. You bitch. Patron of the farts. Patron of the farts. David from Switzerland. David. Nick Sedaris. Sedaris. Emily. Emily. Kim Lucas, Lucas. of all people. All of Jenny Logan. Jenny Logan. Jenny Hogan. Jenny Hogan. RJ. RJ. Jeffrey Pradova. Pradova, you fucking bitch. Bye. Bye. Bye.